Hey guys, Chris here and I'm back with another video. This is definitely a video that I never saw myself making because you guys know that I'm a massive advocate for booster boards. Despite all of the issues that I've had, I actually made a video about all of the issues I had with my board that I'll link down below if you've not seen it. But I recently picked up the Evolve GTR Bamboo and I thought of course because these two are easily some of the best premium boards that you can get. Both of these boards cost above £1,300. I thought it'd be a good idea to do a VS or a comparison against these two to give you a bit of insight into the differences between them, the differences that I've kind of picked up on and of course my preference on which one I prefer. So in this video, as always, I'm going to be going through a few categories to explain my view on both of these boards and maybe to highlight which one of these boards is better. Of course, this is very opinion based, but bear with me as we go through the categories and I share a bit of insight into what it's been like owning these two boards. Let's get into it. The categories that I'm gonna be going through in this video include speed, range, the apps that both of these boards come with. From there, it's also gonna be the charge time, the ride, what it's like to break with these boards, because of course that's important, spares, features, the remote that both of these boards have because they're very, very different. We're also gonna be touching on the appearance, the build, the weight, and also the weather sealing of both of these boards. So let's get into it. The first point I wanted to pick up on or go through was definitely gonna be the speed. The booster board has a recommended speed or suggested speed of 24 miles an hour, and the Evolve GTR Bamboo has a suggested speed of 26 miles an hour. Now, whereas that doesn't sound like much, two miles an hour on essentially a plank of wood with four wheels is definitely something that you notice the difference between. But of course, the speed that you're able to get on a board depends on your build, the surface that you're riding on, the weather conditions, these lots of different factors that will affect your ability to be able to hit the suggested speed of a board. And as we know, a lot of boards boast specs that are just not realistic. These two being premium boards and very expensive boards, that's definitely not the case here. As I said in my previous videos, the suggested speed that Booster advertises is a speed that is realistic and a speed that I've been able to hit on numerous occasions. I'm also able to blow past that speed on a few occasions as well. I am right now weighing about 75 kilograms and I've normally got a bag on my back that can be anywhere from five to eight kilograms, depending on what I'm carrying at the time. And I'm still, with all of that stuff on me, able to hit 24 miles an hour, no problem, on the roads around Cambridge, which is where I live and where I predominantly ride. Now, when we look at the GTR Bamboo, same story there, exactly the same setup, same bag on my back. I'm able to hit 25 to 26 miles an hour, no problem on this board. So on paper, it's pretty clear which board is faster top end, which is gonna be the Evolve GTR. But the booster, if you're wondering in terms of how it stacks up with the acceleration, the Evolve still does edge it out. These are a couple of things that I'll go into, like the app that Evolve have, that lets you tweak essentially the intensity of the acceleration that the board has. But even with the Evolve set up as standard, making sure that it is on the street wheels, 97 millimeter street wheels, the acceleration is definitely greater than the boosters. So overall, the Evolve is quicker than the booster board, if that's what you're wondering. But it's definitely worth mentioning that the app that the Evolve GTR has allows you to tweak or adjust the intensity of the acceleration so you can actually make it quicker off of the line. So that brings us really nicely onto range. Now, when we look at the booster board, this is really where you start to see a lot of big differences between these two boards. The booster board has a suggested range when you're in the fastest mode that the board can go in of roughly about 6.2 miles. And I said in my previous videos that the mileage that you see on the app of the booster board is really the mileage that you're able to get. If it says that you've got six miles, you are gonna be able to get six miles, which is great. And now while that's enough for my commute, it's enough for me to be shredding around the city. Something that I've been doing over the course of the end of the summer is going from Cambridge to London on the train and spending the whole day riding about the city. At the time, six miles seems like more than enough, but when you get into riding, I even went down the route of picking up an additional battery for my boost at Stealth so I could ride much more. Now, when we look at the range of the Evolve, I've been able to get 20 miles out of this board on GTR mode, which is the fastest mode that this board goes. It's almost a joke, the difference that you're able to get in range out of these two boards, considering the price is very, very similar. Six miles versus 20 miles riding as quickly as you can through a city is almost uncomparable. So in terms of range, if you're looking for a board that's gonna be able to allow you to ride without having to be concerned about battery life, then the Evolve is definitely gonna be the one that you need to consider. 20 miles for me seems almost unrealistic to be able to do on a board, but it's been a really, really nice upgrade that the Evolve has over the Boosted. 
Now saying that I was able to get 20 miles out of the board is great, and especially the fact that that was done in GTR mode. But something that's definitely worth mentioning with the GTR bamboo is that as you chew through the battery, you go from say 100% down to say 60%, you do lose anywhere from one to two miles of your top speed. Now whereas that essentially puts it down to the top speed of the boosted board, it's something that I would, if at all possible, would like not to happen. You wanna be able to make sure that you can hit max speed throughout the entire life of the battery. I know that's not realistic, but a guy can dream. Now, one thing I do have to give Booster is even when I get to sort of like 20% battery, 30% battery, I've not really had a loss in speed or torque. The board feels exactly the same as it did when I was at say 70% or 80%. Now with the Evolve GTR Bamboo, that's not been the case. Once you drop to sort of 70, 60%, you do lose a couple of miles. But then you have to bear in mind that say, 50% battery capacity on the booster board essentially translates to three miles in the fastest mode that the board goes in. Now, although I still have full torque and full speed when I've got 50%, I only have three miles if I'm riding the booster board. But now if I look at 50% battery left on my Evolve GTR Bamboo, that's 10 miles still in GTR mode. So although I've lost one or two miles an hour off of my top speed, I still have 10 miles of range, which it, it blows my mind. It really does. I never thought I would ever get into this board as much as I have, but I don't regret buying it any way, shape or form. Now, when we look at the app that both of these boards have, Boosted's app allows you to track your rides. You're able to see how much battery percentage you have left. You're able to switch between the modes that the board has. And of course, you can share your rides on social media. The other thing that the Boosted Boards app has is an odometer. So you can see how many miles that you've done during the ride that you're doing right now. But it also shows you a total mileage that the board has done. Now, although depending on what wheels you have, this isn't 100% accurate, it gives you a very clear idea of how many miles a board has done. So if you're selling it or you're just curious to see how much you've been riding your board. The Evolve app, on the other hand, allows you to tweak the uh, acceleration or the intensity of the acceleration or the aggressiveness uh, while you're inside the app. It also allows you to record your rides and share it with the Evolve community or on social media, but it doesn't let you see your battery percentage. It doesn't show you how many miles that the board has done in total, which for me isn't really a deal breaker, but it's definitely something worth mentioning. Something else that is incredibly frustrating with the Evolve app is you can only sign in using a Facebook account. You have to link it directly to Facebook. I think this is terrible. I don't link any external apps to my Facebook account I've just, I've never wanted to do that. And I think it's very annoying that Evolve don't allow you to just sign in using an email form like pretty much every other app that I've ever come across. So it's definitely worth mentioning that. But not being able to see your battery percentage on the Evolve app isn't really a big deal because it's hard getting out of the mindset of needing to worry about your battery life on a board after you've come off of a booster because, you know, having a range of roughly six miles and then going from that to a range of 20 miles, you're still going to be in the mindset of I need to be very cautious of how much battery, how much juice I've got left in my board. But with the Evolve, you just you don't need to do that. It's hard to tell yourself to get out of that mindset, but you don't need to. But the frustration with Evolve's apps and boards is the fact that it doesn't show you the total mileage that the board has done. I know that they have lots of gear setups, the all-terrain wheels, they also have the 97s, the, the 107s, so a lot of different wheel diameters that will affect the accuracy of the odometer, but at the same time, it would be nice to have a general idea of what the board has done. Hopefully that helps share a bit of insight into the way both of these two apps work. So from there, we move on to the charging of both of these boards. Now, the charging on the booster board takes roughly from an hour to an hour and a half to get a full charge on the battery from completely flat or close to flat. The Evolve GTR Bamboo is essentially double that. So you're looking at two to three hours to charge up the board. It's not something that you have to do very frequently because, for example, I was in London yesterday riding my board and I charged it in the morning and we rode around maybe 10 miles around London then we got a train back to Cambridge, rode around Cambridge for a bit before coming home. I still have plenty of juice left in the board. At the minute, I'm sat on roughly about 55%, which is just insane. Whereas the booster, of course, shorter charge time makes sense because the battery doesn't have as great a capacity. You have a shorter range, but I'm willing to sacrifice an extra couple of hours waiting for a battery to charge if it's going to mean I'm going to have more than double the range that I'm typically used to. So booster, hour and a half roughly for a full charge. Evolve, you're looking at, say, two to three hours for a full charge. But bear in mind, about 20 miles in GTR mode and about six miles in the fastest mode that the booster has. 
Now this is a bit of a little one, but of course the placement of the chargers is a little bit of a big deal with boards. It just adds to the convenience of being able to charge the board on the go. I do prefer the uh, way that the boost its charger has been positioned underneath the board. So you have to pick the board up, flip it on its onto its back or put it up against a wall exactly like I have it now, lift up the tab and plug it into charge. Whereas the Evolve GTR Bamboo, the charger port is on the side. So you don't have to pick the board up but I find it a little bit more inaccessible based on the way that I put my board down and where my board rests when I'm not using it. Aside from that, the tab that sits on the booster board that you lift up to put the charger port into, the one on the Evolve GTR Bamboo kind of pops out a lot. It might just be the one that I've got now, but it's, it doesn't kind of like sink into the charger port as deeply as the boost it does to ensure that it doesn't pop out. The Evolve one is a bit finicky, which is sounds like a really, really silly thing to mention, but it's definitely worth mentioning it. Now this brings us onto probably one of the most important parts, the ride of both of these boards. Now bear with me because I've got a lot to share here. The booster, the reason I said it was my favorite board was because of the way that deck had been designed, the shape, the length of it, the flexibility of it. It was just incredibly stable. I felt very safe. I felt planted. And it's why it's been so hard to move away from this board. Now when I moved onto the Evolve, the first time I got onto it, I didn't feel safe, I felt a bit twitchy. One of the reasons for that is when you're accelerating with the Evolve and you release the trigger, there's a bit of a jolt, and this happens regardless of what Evolve board I've been on. My camera operator for my full-time YouTube channel, which is Hockey Tutorial, has the Evolve GTR Carbon, and the exact same thing happens on that. You go up to speed, you let go off of the trigger, and there's a bit of a jolt as the board kind of, I guess, knows that you've let go off of the trigger. It still rolls, it still coasts, it doesn't break, there's just a weird jolt that can throw you off balance. This is something I've never experienced on any of the booster boards that I've had. You let go off of the trigger, it essentially just continues gliding with absolutely no interruption to your gliding. Seems like a little pet peeve, but it's something that I noticed because sometimes you get up to speed, you're rolling down a hill, you let go off the trigger and I get that jolt. It's not nice, it's something that I've had to adjust to, but it's definitely worth mentioning. Aside from that, Something that I didn't really understand with the Evolve GTR Bamboo was when I was riding it and I was trying to get into turning and carving, it felt like the back end kept sliding out. Of course, I know a new board, new wheels, they need time to be worn in to have grip, but this just, it was a weird sensation that I hadn't really felt. I just, I didn't feel safe or stable on the board and I couldn't figure out what was happening. So my first ride on the GTR Bamboo was terrible. I hated the board, but I had it, I paid for it, I'd ridden it, I had to get used to it, see if it was something that I could even get used to liking and, and enjoy riding. Now, the second time I read it was a little bit better than the first, but again, I wasn't comfortable with the board. I wasn't enjoying my time on it. The third time something happened. I kind of figured out, it seems really silly, but I kind of figured out because of uh, Evolves, what I'm gonna to refer to as their dual truck setup, where essentially you have the normal trucks that you'd expect on the bottom of a longboard or a skateboard, and then above those trucks, they have additional trucks. This is something unique to Evolve. I've not really seen this with any other skateboards that do a good job of it, but that was what was creating this really strange sensation and feeling of the wheels slipping out when I was turning. Essentially, when you lean to turn and the trucks go as far, far as they can when you lean into your turn, the secondary trucks kind of kick in and you get a bit of additional turning. It means that the turning circle or the turning radius on the Evolve GTR Bamboo is insane in comparison to the booster board. That means carving, turning is not only sharper and better, and when you get used to it smoother, it's deeper. And because of that, that's what was creating that feeling of discomfort and kind of like lack of stability while I was riding the board. The second I figured that out and I got used to it, carving very slowly, feeling what the trucks felt like to move with, I couldn't believe it. It was almost impossible to then go back to the booster board. The control, how deep you can get into your turns, how hard you can carve on the Evolve in comparison to the booster is, it's, it's like night and day, they're two different things. And getting over that milestone was what took me from really hating my time on the Evolve GTR Bamboo to absolutely loving it. I cannot go back to riding the booster board and enjoy turning and carving anywhere near as much as I can on the Evolve. I never thought that was gonna happen. And of course the twitchiness of the remote when you release it and you get that kind of jolt when you're riding. And of course the differences in the shapes of the deck, all of those things didn't matter because once you get used to the way this board feels and maneuvers, there's no going back. But another point that's definitely worth mentioning is also gonna be the shapes of the deck. It looks like the Evolve, the deck itself is much longer than the boost. It's just even from this position over here, but you have to remember that the wheels sit so much further forward 
on the Evolve and they are much bigger. The trucks are also wider. All of this affects the perception of which board is actually bigger. Give or take a few millimeters, these decks are essentially the same length, but the Evolve deck is slightly wider and the concave in terms of the middle of the deck is much deeper and more pronounced than the booster board. So that's something that you notice. This deck isn't anywhere near as flexible as the Boosted's deck, but it's flexible enough for you to have a very stable, very enjoyable ride if you're used to that type of deck and then you switch over to Evolve's style. Some of the other things that I noticed is, of course, Evolve's battery is significantly bigger than Boosted's, hence the extra range. But if you're going over speed bumps or rough surfaces, rough roads, up and down curves, you do need to be aware of the battery size because you don't want to catch it and scratch it um, as you're going over different things on the roads. That's definitely something worth mentioning. There is a little bit of battery sag with the Evolve GTR Bamboo, but nowhere near as much as some of Evolve's previous boards, but it's definitely worth mentioning that as well. So of course I'm also going to touch on braking a little bit with these two boards. As most of us are aware of, boosted boards don't really have a brake, they have a reverse gear, so the board goes as fast forward as it does backwards, and when you scroll back to brake, the wheels are essentially starting to roll backwards. This has multiple benefits, but it also has a few negatives. If you pull it back very quickly, the board will spin out and you will probably come off, so it takes a bit of getting used to. Now with Evolve's brake, it's just a brake. The bottom trigger on the remote is your acceleration, of course with the dead man switch below that, and the top trigger or switch is your brake. Now with Evolve's boards, this particular board that I have over here, at speed, the brake is fantastic. It's very, very strong, very powerful, and it will bring you to a stop. But as you start to kind of get to the end of the, the braking period or the stopping period, the board never actually comes to a complete and utter stop. If you're moving at speed, like I said, you will stop, but the wheels will have a tiny bit of roll at the end of the stop. Whereas with the boosted board, because the wheels are essentially starting to roll backwards, you can stop and come to a complete halt, especially if you're rolling down a hill, you're able to brake, wheels start rotating backwards, and if you know how to do it and you've been using it for a while, you can get used to it enough to be able to bring you to a complete stop, even going down a hill. Neither is better than the other. In different scenarios, of course, one will be better than the other, like boost board braking down a hill will be better than evolve braking down a hill. Uh, but it's just, again, takes a bit of getting used to. But the Evolve brake at low speeds is essentially useless. There is no braking effectively when you're going very, very slowly. At speed, the brake is great, but at low speeds, the brake isn't there at all. That's definitely something worth mentioning. It's not really a problem because if you're rolling, you can just put your foot down, but it's definitely worth mentioning that at low speeds, the brake isn't anywhere near as good as it is at high speeds. I'm also going to touch on spares very quickly. So the spare parts that both of these boards have are widely accessible. Of course, it does depend on where you live, but if you're in Europe, North America, Australia, any countries like that, you have no issues getting spare parts for either of these boards. They're easy to pick up, especially if you're based in the UK. Uh, Evolve have a repair center based in the UK, which means if you have anything broken on the border, it does need to be repaired. It's convenient. Boosted service center is in the Netherlands in Dunhaag, which is not really a big issue because um, it's fairly easy to get the board there and Boosted do arrange free shipping and drop off of your boards. It takes a little bit longer, but service is there. So it's worth mentioning. If you compare these boards to some of the other boards that you get, the spare parts might be very, very difficult to find or they might have to be shipped from China. So that's always something worth considering. Now onto the features of both of these boards. Now, as we know, the booster board has the LED in the indication lights on the uh, battery, so you can see how many bars of battery that you have. It's got the uh, button over there to be able to turn the board off and on, as you'd expect, charger port at the top. Now, with the Evolve, you don't have any sort of battery indication lights on it. You do have two USB ports underneath the board that I believe are used for some lights, but of course you can use them for other things if you want to. But there's no battery indication lights on the board itself. But again, it's trying to tell yourself to come out of that mindset of needing to worry about your battery life because essentially you don't have to worry about that. But when we look at the features that the Boosted board has, from what I can see, Boosted really do like their boards to be kept standard. There's not really a lot of room for alterations or modifications that they condone. Whereas the Evolves are completely different. You can change, for example, the positioning of the trucks. You can move them further forward, further back. Same with the bottom ones. They also have a wide, wide selection of different tire options. You've got 97 millimeters, which is what I have on there at the minute. I'm about to pick up 107s. You've got all terrains, which come in two different sizes. And you also have different gear setups. So you can increase your top speed or you can increase your torque and acceleration. Evolve are essentially trying to create a board that 
can be modified to each rider's particular style or the area or surfaces that they're riding on. Whereas booster boards are very much what you get is, you know, what you see is what you get. It's, it's as it is and there's not really much that you can do to it without probably voiding your warranty and irritating boost it. Whereas Evolve seem to be a little bit more open-minded. So again, if you're looking for a board that you can really tweak and customize to the way that you like it, even with their app, Evolve's app, being able to tweak the acceleration, um, torque or, Anything like that is, if you want that type of board, if you want that type of flexibility, you want to mod it to fit your needs, Evolve is definitely going to have one over on Boosted in that area. Now from there, we're going to be looking at both of the remotes. Boosted remote essentially has a trigger and a wheel to be able to scroll back and forth. Forward is acceleration, back is brake, or as I mentioned earlier on, technically reverse. Um, in terms of what the board, uh, in terms of what the remote has on it, you've got the battery indication lights for the board's battery. You've also got the Bluetooth indication light to let you know if the board is connected or paired with your board. And then at the bottom, you've got the light that lets you know how much battery the remote has in itself. And that's pretty much it. There's no screen, nothing else on this. That's never really been an issue because when you're riding a board at 24 miles an hour, it's best not to be looking here. It's best to be looking where you're going. So that's not really ever bothered me. But when we look at Evolve's remote, of course, you have the dead man switch at the bottom. You've got the trigger to be able to accelerate and you have the top trigger or switch, depending on what you like to call it, to be able to brake. Then the remote has two more buttons along the middle section to be able to switch through different modes and also to be able to switch through different options on the menu screen that is built into the uh, remote over here. So you're able to change things like the mode that you're in. You're able to adjust the settings for the wheel circumference that you have on the board at the time. And you're able to do other things like changing the um, speed from miles to kilometers, depending on what you like, and various other options that this uh, particular remote has. Now, in terms of the uh, feel of the remotes, I have to say that I, I do prefer the feel of the Boosted remote. Uh, in, in my opinion, this is just much more of an ergonomic design. We've seen it copied by lots of different manufacturers. I just prefer the scrolling rather than the squeezing of a trigger, but that's just my personal preference. There's never been anything wrong with this. It doesn't impede my riding. It's just if I had the option to, I'd definitely go for that setup. But having the screen that lets you see the battery percentage on the board, the battery percentage of the remote itself, the speed that you're moving at, the Bluetooth connection, the mode that you're in, all of these things are pretty nice to be able to have a display that shows you, as opposed to having to go into the app to see what mode you're in or listen to the bleeps of the remote with the booster board to be able to figure out what mode you're in if you don't have an app set up on your board. So it's nice having a screen for sure, uh, but it'd be nice to see some sort of merge between these two remotes, if at all possible. Of course, again, a guy can dream. But uh, there's a bit of insight on the uh, two different remotes for these boards. Now, when we look at the appearance of both of these boards, I personally think that these are two of the best looking skateboards out there. Of course, personal preference, this is just what I prefer. I'm a big fan of the uh, all stealth look of the booster board, but then again, the Evolve GTR, it just looks mean, it looks expensive, it looks well made. Big fan of the way both of these boards look. Um, you'll have to let me know in the comment section down below which one you prefer the look of. Now, very quickly touching on the build of both of these boards, they're premium boards, but in my opinion, if you're trying to figure out which one is built better, uh, it's, it comes down to a couple of things. You have to remember that the different countries that these boards are made in has a massive impact on the quality of the boards. Boosted do have a lot of premium materials on their boards. Their belt covers or motor covers are metal, whereas Evolve's are plastic. But aside from that, I do feel like the Evolve GTR is built better than the Boosted board. That's my personal opinion. Uh, just based off of using them both, interacting with the boards both, changing different parts out, it just feels like the Evolve team have done a better board of constructing their boards from, I guess you could say, better quality and, and more uh, premium materials as opposed to the Boosted, but this is my opinion. If you feel differently, let me know in the comment section below, but that's just my experience from using both of these boards. Now, when we look at the weight of both of these boards, that's quite a big one because if you're going to be using public transport and a longboard, or you need to just carry it from A to B, the boost it sits at about 7.7 kilograms, whereas the Evolve sits at 11.5 kilograms. Big difference in weight, and I'm not going to lie and say it's something that you don't notice. I really like this board, but my God, is it heavy. The booster board is something you can carry with one hand up and down stairs. The Evolve you can too, but you are going to feel the burn much, much quicker. That's probably one of the only negatives or drawbacks between the Evolve versus the booster is the Evolve is significantly heavier. Now, I'm only going to touch on this very briefly because I don't ever condone riding in the wet because it is very dangerous and it's no good for the board. But both of these boards are weather sealed. I will mention that because of the motor placement on the boost at Stealth, I find that if you're riding and it's quite damp or moist on the ground and you have water kicking up on the wheels, it goes all over the motors, all over the belts. Whereas the positioning on the Evolve GTR with the motors being positioned higher up and back, 
it's not really something that happens. Of course, if it's actually raining when you're riding, then you're gonna get water everywhere. But in terms of riding when the ground is a little bit damp or wet, I find that the Evolve GTR has its motors placed in a position that actually helps to keep it a little bit drier in relation to the motors, not the base of the board. But both of these boards are weather sealed. I did recently ride in the wet with the Evolve, not because I wanted to, but because I got caught out in the weather and the board seemed to be completely fine. My motors were dry, but the base of the board was quite wet. The boost is the same case. But what I tend to do is remove the battery and also this box at the base of the board because sometimes water does get under there because of the way that the deck flexes. And if water does get under there, it won't dry for a few days unless you let it breathe. So I just do that to just give the board a better chance of drying out and hopefully not experiencing any issues. So hopefully this video has helped to shed a bit of light onto the differences between these two boards. I've had a great time riding both of them. Currently my go-to board is definitely going to be the Evolve GTR Bamboo. I'd never never expected that. You guys know from watching my previous videos that I'm a massive boost board advocate. But having had a go on this and, you know, learning the way that the board performs and the way it maneuvers, it's difficult to go back to riding anything else, which is essentially what happened when I first got my boost at board. But we'll see how it goes over the next few months. Hopefully this is giving you a bit of insight into my opinion on each of these two boards. As something that I will mention before I uh, end the video is do not base your perception on a board off of the specs that you read on a website. The build quality, the ride, the maneuverability of the board, the general quality of the board and the reliability of it are things that you cannot read on a screen. You need to experience them. So just take that away with you from this. Uh, but if you're wondering which board is my favorite right now, of course, if it's not clear by now, it's the Evolve GTR Bamboo. Like I said earlier on in the video, my camera operator for Hockey Tutorial has a GTR Carbon. So at some point I'm gonna be borrowing that board, if he lets me, to be able to create a Bamboo versus Carbon video. If you wanna see that, leave your comments down below in the video description. If there's anything I missed, leave your questions down below in the video description and I will catch you in the next one. Don't forget to thumbs up and subscribe and take care. And thanks for watching this video all the way to the end if you made it this far in. Peace.